All right, so in part one, we talked about what testosterone actually does and why it crashes and how it's not just about sex drive or building muscle, but that deep internal drive to focus, to push, to lead, to win. So now let's get to the fun part. How do you raise testosterone naturally without going on TRT? Because for many guys, their testosterone isn't broken. It's just being suffocated by modern life. Your biology wants to produce testosterone. You just need to stop interfering with the signal. So here's your step-by-step -step protocol. These are big levers, the evidence-based ones. Let's go. So the first is resistance training, and this is the gold standard. So if you're not lifting weights, you are missing the biggest natural testosterone trigger we know of. Why? Because strength training sends a loud signal to your brain. This body is being used. We need strength. We need testosterone. So let's break it down. Resistance training causes an acute spike in testosterone right after a workout, particularly when you train large muscle groups like the legs, back, and chest. Compound lifts, so this is things like squats and deadlifts and overhead press, give you the best hormonal return on investment. You wanna make sure you use moderate to heavy loads, so basically 70 to 85% of your one rep max. And make sure to keep the rest interval short, so basically 60 to 90 seconds, in order to spike the anabolic response. And over time, strength training also improves insulin sensitivity and reduces visceral fat, both of which raise free testosterone. Now, is the T-boost massive? No, maybe 10 to 15%, but combined with other changes, it adds up. And perhaps more importantly, training increases androgen receptor density. So you actually use the testosterone you already have more effectively. So if your goal is to increase your testosterone through resistance training, you wanna make sure you're lifting three to four times per week. You also wanna prioritize strength over volume. You wanna make sure you get stronger. Next up is sleep, basically your nightly testosterone infusion. So if lifting is the most anabolic signal you get by day, sleep is your body's time to build it all. Testosterone secretion is sleep dependent, specifically linked to deep REM sleep in the early morning hours. And missing sleep, it crushes your levels. So as I referenced that JAMA article from 2011, basically what they found is that five hours of sleep per night for one week reduced testosterone by 10 to 15%. And this was in healthy 20 something guys. That's not chronic sleep, that's a bad week. Your goal should be at least eight hours of high quality sleep every night. So how do you get there? First, make sure you go to bed at the same time every night. Additionally, blackout curtains. You want a pitch black room. Also no screens at least 60 minutes before bed. Additionally, cut alcohol as well as late caffeine. And lastly, sleeping in a cold, quiet, cave-like room. Sleep is not an option. It's hormonal therapy for free every night. Now, how about body fat? Lose it, free your testosterone. So fat isn't just fat, it's a hormonal organ. Specifically visceral fat, and that's the fat around your belly and your organs, it produces something called aromatase. Basically an enzyme that converts testosterone to estrogen. That's right. Fat literally eats your testosterone. And when estrogen rises, your brain thinks you've got enough sex hormones and it shuts off LH, luteinizing hormone signaling to the testes. So now you're low T and high estrogen. It's not a good combination. But here's the wild part. Studies show that overweight men who lose just 10 to 15% of their body weight can increase their testosterone by between 200 and 300 nanograms per deciliter. That's enough to take you from the low 300s back into the normal range. So how do you lose fat without crashing testosterone during the cut? First, you wanna make sure you lose slow. So somewhere between one half to one pound per week. Additionally, lift weights to preserve lean mass. Eat enough protein. So this is about one gram per pound of body weight. Don't go ultra low fat or ultra low carb. And lastly, prioritize sleep and stress reduction during weight loss. Bonus, losing belly fat also improves sleep apnea as well as lowers cortisol. Win-win. So here's the big one. Sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG. You could have plenty of total testosterone, but if SHBG is too high, that T is locked up and unavailable. It's like owning a Ferrari, but the keys are missing. So what affects SHBG? So in terms of things that are going to increase SHBG, it's gonna be chronic calorie restriction, uh, low carb, low insulin states, estrogen exposure, hyperthyroidism, aging, and intermittent fasting when overdone. Now, in terms of things that are gonna lower SHBG, it's gonna be a higher carb intake. So what lowers SHBG? The first is high carb intake via insulin, and I have a video about that that I'll, I'll link to. Additionally, there's strength training, 
um, boron supplementation, they've actually found that 10 milligrams a day can decrease SHBG by up to 39%, DHEA, and then lastly, sufficient protein. So if your free T is low and your SHBG is high, it's time to adjust your training, your carbs, or consider adding boron, DHEA, or other targeted supplements we'll cover in a moment. And no, you can't guess your SHBG from symptoms. You have to test it. Now let's talk food. So your body makes testosterone from cholesterol. So fat isn't the enemy, it's actually the building block. You wanna make sure that you're eating healthy fats. So olive oil, avocados, whole eggs, grass-fed meats, and fatty fish. Additionally, you wanna avoid going under a 20% fat intake. Studies show that low-fat diets can drop testosterone by 10 to 15%. And carbs matter too, especially for active individuals. Super low carb diets can raise SHBG and tank your free testosterone. So for most men, a split of approximately 40% carbs, 30% protein, 30% fat works well. Don't overthink it. Just eat real whole foods with enough calories to support muscle and recovery. And then layer in the big three micronutrients. So the first is zinc, which is critical for LH signaling as well as testosterone synthesis. And it's found in things like red meat and oysters and pumpkin seeds. Next up is magnesium. So it improves free tea and helps support sleep. And most people are deficient. And lastly is vitamin D. It's literally a steroid home. So if you're low, supplementing can actually boost your testosterone from anywhere from 10 to 25%. Now, what about stress and cortisol? Basically what I like to call the silent killer. So cortisol and testosterone have an inverse relationship. The higher your cortisol, the lower your tea. This is your body's triage system. So when you're in a stressed survival mode, it shuts off the reproductive access. It's a primal adaptation. It doesn't want you, your body doesn't want you rebuilding and reproducing when you're running from a tiger. But in modern life, that tiger is emails or bills or no sleep or six cups of coffee. And here's the thing, you can't out supplement chronic stress. You need a stress off ramp daily, meditation, nature walks, uh, sauna, cold plunges, therapy, journaling, breath work. In fact, studies show that even 10 to 20 minutes a day of mindfulness or deep breathing can lower cortisol and increase testosterone over time. Not to mention, lower cortisol means better sleep, more energy, and faster recovery. This is the multiplier, don't skip it. Now, when it comes to sex and testosterone, I basically say use it or lose it. So yes, testosterone increases sex drive. But what most guys don't realize is that sex and arousal also increase testosterone. In fact, sexual activity can raise T by up to 70% in the short term. In fact, even visual arousal raises T within minutes. Additionally, regular sex helps keep baseline T up. And lastly, prolonged abstinence like months can actually cause levels to decline. And similar to like we discussed with fat, this is what makes low T such a downward spiral. Basically, low T leads to low libido, which leads to less sex, which leads to even lower testosterone. But the flip is also true. Better lifestyle, higher testosterone, more desire, more sex, higher testosterone. It's a feedback loop. Use it. Now, what about supplements that actually work? So this is where most guys start, but it really should be the last stop, only after lifestyle is locked in. Still, there are some evidence-based options. So the first is ashwagandha. 600 milligrams a day has been found to lower cortisol levels ultimately raising testosterone from anywhere from 14 to 22%. Next up, we have Tonkhead Ali. So basically 200 to 400 milligrams per day. It's been found to boost testosterone by up to 150 nanograms per deciliter. Next up, we have fenugreek. Supports libido and causes a slight increase in testosterone. Next, we have DHEA, 25 to 50 milligrams. It's especially useful for men over the age of 50 or those who have low DHEA. DIM, which supports estrogen metabolism which could improve that testosterone to estrogen ratio in high estrogen guys. And lastly, boron. Six to 10 milligrams has been found to lower SHBG, ultimately boosting your free testosterone. Again, these work best when layered onto a strong foundation. Don't expect magic pills. And that's the core protocol. So if you want more testosterone and all the drive and libido and focus and vitality that comes with it, this is where you start. It's not one thing, it's the full stack. So lifting heavy, deep sleep, eating smart, losing fat, de-stressing daily, having sex, supplementing strategically, and freeing up your testosterone by lowering your SHBG. Your body doesn't need to be forced into hormone replacement. It needs to be given permission and the right signal to thrive. And when that signal is loud and clear, 
you don't just feel stronger, you feel like yourself again. And if you enjoyed things so far, click on the link to the next video where we're gonna talk about sex and aging and toxins in the final framework.